Exodus chapter 12. And uh, are we good to go, Corey? Excellent. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha, Vechaverim. Shabbat Shalom, family and friends. I would just like to ask if anybody has a question or comment, please save it for after the message and we'll be happy to answer it. Today's topic is going to be preparation for Pesach. We are one week away from Passover and I would like us to turn in our scriptures to Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to read chapter 12 and the beginning of chapter 13, and then we will uh, make some observations. So turn with me to Exodus chapter 12, starting in verse 1. Yehovah spoke to Moshe and Aharon in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household be too little for a lamb, then he and his neighbor next to his house shall take one according to the number of the souls. According to what everyone can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Without blemish, a male, a year old, you shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at evening. Verse 7, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two side posts and on the lintel, on the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and with matzah. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at, at all with water, but roasted with fire with its head, its legs, and its inner parts. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, but that which remains of it until... This is how you shall eat it, with your loins girded, with your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Pesach of Yehovah. For I will go through the land of Egypt in that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and animal. Against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am Jehovah. Verse 13. The blood shall be to you for a token on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and there shall no plague be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be to you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to Jehovah. Throughout your generations, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat matzah, even the first day you shall put away leaven or yeast out of your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. In the first day, there shall be to you a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, a holy convocation. No manner of work shall be done in them except that which every man must eat, that only may he be done by you. Verse 17, you shall observe the feast of matzah, chag hamatzot. Same day have I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day throughout your generations by an ordinance for how long? 
forever. Verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at evening, you shall eat matzah until the 21st day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no yeast or no leaven found in your houses. For whoever eats that which is leavened, that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a foreigner or one who is born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations you shall eat matzah. Daniel. Daniel, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Daniel, Ephraim, uh, Shmuel, Shmuel is thinking of you. Verse 21. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, draw out and take lambs according to your families and kill the Pesach. So notice here the word Pesach refers specifically to what? The offering of the lamb. The lamb is the Pesach. So when we say we're preparing for Passover, we're literally saying we're preparing for the Passover sacrifice. Or as it is written here in the Torah, that the Pesach is referring directly to the lamb that was offered. Verse 22. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, lintel and the two side posts with the, with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For Jehovah will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel Whoa. and on the two side posts, Jehovah will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. You shall observe this thing for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. Verse 24 in Hebrew reads, U shemartem et hadavar hazeh lechak lecha u levanecha ad olam. Ad olam meaning forever. It shall happen when you have come to the land that Jehovah will give you according as he has promised that you shall keep this service. It will happen when your children ask you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Pesach of Jehovah who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and spared our houses, the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Literally, they prostrated themselves. It says, Vaishtachavu. The children of Israel went and did so. As Jehovah had commanded Moshe and Aharon, so they did. Verse 29. It happened at midnight that Jehovah struck all the firstborn of the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead. He called for Moshe and Aharon by night and said, rise up and get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel. Go and serve Jehovah as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said and be gone and bless me also. The Egyptian people were urgent with the people to send them out of the land in haste for they said we are all dead men such fear was upon them that they said get out before we're all dead verse 34 the people took their dough before it was leavened their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes on their shoulders 
the children of Israel did according to the word of Moshe. And they asked of the Egyptians of jewelry of silver and jewels of gold and clothing. Yehovah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have whatever they asked. They despoiled the Egyptians. The sons of Israel traveled from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot, who were men besides children. A mixed multitude went up also with them, with flocks, herds, and even very much cattle. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not wait. Neither had they prepared for themselves any food. <clears throat> Verse 40. Now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. It happened at the end of 430 years, even the same day it happened that all the hosts of Jehovah went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed to Jehovah. Leil Shmurim Hu La Jehovah. <coughs> it's a, a night of much guarding and fearful observance to Adonai for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Jehovah to be much observed of all the children of Israel throughout their generations. Jehovah said to Moshe and Aharon, this is the ordinance of the Pesach. There shall no foreigner eat of it, but every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then shall he eat of it. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat of it. If one house, pardon me, verse 46, in one house shall it be eaten. You shall not carry forth anything of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone of it. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. When a stranger shall live as a foreigner with you and will keep the Pesach to Jehovah, let all his males be circumcised and let them come near and he shall be as one who is born in the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. One Torah shall be to him who is born at home. Torah Echad. Torah Echad Yeh Le Ezrach. One Torah shall be for him who is born, a native born, and to the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. Thus did all the sons of Israel, as Jehovah commanded Moshe and Aharon, so they did. Verse 51. It happened the same day that Jehovah brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their hosts. And if we go to the next chapter, the first few verses. Jehovah spoke to Moshe saying, Sanctify to me all of the firstborn, whoever opens the womb among the sons of Israel, both of man and of animal, it is mine. Moshe said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Jehovah brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. This day you go forth in the month of Aviv. It shall be when Jehovah shall bring you into the land of the Canaani and the Hiti and the Amori and the Chivi and the Yevusi, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat matzah, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Jehovah. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout, and no leavened bread shall be eaten with you. Neither shall there be any yeast or leaven seen with you in all your borders. You shall tell your son in that day, saying, 
it is because of that which Jehovah did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. It shall be for a sign to you on your hand and for memorial between your eyes that the Torah of Jehovah may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Jehovah has brought you out from Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. Ushmarta et ha hazot lemoada niyamim yamima. From year to year, from season to season, you shall guard and observe this ordinance. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your instructions. Father, as we prepare for Passover, I pray, Father, you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Instruct us, Father, in your ways. Teach us, Father, how to prepare for Passover. Teach us how to observe this Passover that may be pleasing to you, Father. Instruct us in the way that we should go. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. About today, the sun is shining, the snow is melting very quickly, and uh, you know, every time that winter ends and spring comes, it's, it's an exciting time. It's a time of rejuvenation, a time of renewal, a time of new life, new opportunity, and I would say new breakthrough and new joy and new challenges. And more so this year, 2021, it is a time of opportunity in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, in the midst of worldwide uh, fear and panic, this Passover is extremely, extremely meaningful, significant. We are um, in a world where uh, there is many challenges. We, we are challenged with uh, restrictions to our travel, with uh, restrictions to our uh, ability to gather for worship and, and many other challenges with uh, um, a vaccine that is now uh, being made available, whether uh, mandatory or not, remains to be seen. Uh, certainly, is be, it is being uh, pushed as mandatory within the land of Israel uh, and the nation of Israel. Whether that will be the case in, uh, remains to be seen. But nonetheless, Passover is an exciting opportunity to demonstrate and teach our children in a very practical, a very tangible way, what it means to follow Adonai and what it means to be disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, what it means to be born again. Adonai instructs us in the Torah that every year we are to take time at Passover to teach our children about the eternal significance of this holiday the deliverance of our people from Egypt. It is also a parallel. It is a, a microcosm, if you like. It is uh, a, har a foreshadowing of our redemption in Messiah Yeshua and in his blood from all nations, all tribes and all tongues that we are called out to be a people for Adonai. And it is the deliverance of our people from Egypt 
is also the story of our redemption in Messiah Yeshua. It says in chapter 12 of Exodus that we read, when your children ask you, what do you mean by this ceremony? Say, it is the sacrifice of Yehovah's Pesach. Because Yehovah passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he killed the Egyptians, but he spared our houses. As we read in chapter 12 of Exodus, we are commanded to observe Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days forever. It is to be a generations as an everlasting ordinance. Whenever we are commanded to keep and observe something forever, it is reflective of the covenant making and covenant keeping nature of the Most High. His Torah stands forever. His feasts stand forever. In preparation for Passover, we're commanded to do the following. And if you're taking notes, the first thing we are to do is we are to remove leaven. Take out all the leaven from our homes before the 14th day of the first month. Before the 14th day of the first month. And we have a calendar here that I saw a moment ago. This year, the first day of the first month was on um, so on the eve of March 14th, the new moon was sighted in Jerusalem, marking the 15th day of March as the first day of Aviv, the first day of the first month. So the first day of the biblical first month was on March the 15th of this year. The 14th day of the first month will be coming on Shabbat. No, Shabbat will be the 13th. The 13th day is on Sunday on March the 28th if you count from the 15th on, so the 15th day being the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The 14th day will be March 28th, Sunday, March 28th. Or if you want to be specific, the 14th day of the month will begin on March the 27th at sunset and will extend until sunset on Sunday, March 28th. Okay, let me just repeat that. The 14th day of the first moon will extend from sunset after Shabbat, March 27th, when Shabbat ends and the sun sets, will begin the 14th day of the first month and it will extend until sunset on Sunday, March 28th. You said that it is going to be on Sunday. That's exactly what I said. Oh, you're saying that the 14th Friday day of the first. <clears throat> let me repeat: the first day of the 14th, the first, the 14th day of the first month will extend from sunset on Shabbat, March 27th, and extend until sunset oh, yeah, yeah. on Sunday, yeah. March 28th. So, yeah. so, making Sunday, March 28th the 14th day of the first month. Why this um, careful attention to the sighting of the new moon? Why do we have to wait until the sliver of the new moon is sighted in Jerusalem in order to declare the beginning of a new month and in order to declare the timing of the Passover? Well, because the Torah was given to a people who were privy to the sun and the moon. They did not have the astronomical uh, technological tools that we have today. 
they were a simple people and the Torah was given to be simple and not to be complicated. It was, uh, it was given so that a seven-year-old would be able to figure out when the day of Passover will be because any seven-year-old child can count to 14. So when the new moon is sighted in Jerusalem, simply count 14 days and you will arrive at the 14th day of the first month. Why is it significant? Because the eternal one, the most high, he gave the instructions and we are to simply accept them and follow them as they are given to us. Today, we have the benefit of technology. And if you are online for the sighting of the new moon, there is a website called renewedmoon.com where believers post the sighting of the new moon as it is sighted in Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? Because according to Isaiah chapter 2, Ki mitzion Torah, udibar Adonai Yerushalayim, that in the end times, the word of Adonai will go forth from Zion and the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. So we pay attention to the sighting of the new moon in Jerusalem so that we are on God's schedule. Leaven, leaven is chametz in Hebrew. By definition, chametz is yeast or any leavening agent that contains yeast. Now, this past year, my wife made some ancient yeast. And to make ancient yeast, you literally take flour and you put water in it and you let it sit on the counter for a week. And it begins to ferment. It begins to uh, create a sourdough. And so this year we, we've enjoyed um, organic sourdough bread made from scratch. So we would take a little batch of that sourdough and we would mix it into our, our, our dough, mix it into our bread, and we would leave it on the counter, sometimes overnight or for a length of time. And the bread would literally, the, the, the dough would rise from the natural yeast that's in the bread. And so this is what the Israelites would do. They would uh, take regular flour and they would let it ferment and would create a little bit of yeast. And they would put on a batch of bread this way. So again, chametz is a leaven or a leavening agent, or if you'd like a sourdough starter that would be considered leaven. So we are to remove leaven from our homes before the 14th day of the first month. So this is time for spring cleaning. It's time to clean out our cupboards, to move the stove, sweep out the crumbs, move the fridge, sweep out the crumbs, and to uh, remove leaven. And what my wife and I do, we stop buying leavened bread a week or two weeks before Passover. And we have some sourdough starter in our home that we've uh, used up the last batch. There's only a little bit left and uh, we'll remove that before the 14th day. Be diligent in your search for leaven. Do I mean by that? Did you know that you will find yeast in some of your prepackaged seasonings or in spices? Check the labels on your sauces because you might be surprised to find yeast in some of the sauce that is sold in cans. You also have to be careful not to buy baked goods the week of Passover because likely muffins and, uh, and biscuits and such will contain yeast. Also, um, prepackaged frozen meals. If you have bought prepackaged frozen meals, eat them up this week because likely if you check the ingredients, they will contain yeast or yeast extract or something to that nature. Also soup packaged powders and so on. Processed foods may contain yeast. Did you know that beer is not the only beverage that contains yeast? Some beverages contain 
yeast or yeast extract. Now, why belabor this point? Well, in the New Covenant writings in 1 Corinthians, Shaul instructs us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, your boasting is not good. Do you not know the saying, it takes only a little chametz, a little leaven, to leaven a whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old chametz so that you can be a new batch of dough, because in reality, you are unleavened. For our Pesach lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. So let us celebrate the Seder, not with leftover chametz, the chametz of wickedness and evil, but with the matzah of purity and truth. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. So Shaul says, as you prepare for Passover, as you remove the chametz from your house, be careful to examine your hearts so that you remove the chametz out of your hearts. So there's no wickedness, no evil found in your heart. Because what good is the removing of crumbs from the floor of your kitchen if your, house, if your heart is full of malice or unforgiveness or bitterness or God forbid hatred? Shaul is saying, get rid of the chametz because you are called to be an, a dough, a batch of dough that is unleavened. Unleavened meaning without contamination, without sin, puffs up. And so Shaul instructs the believers in Corinth as a physical sign of a spiritual reality to get rid of the leaven in our home and examine our hearts as we do it so that our hearts are without leaven. The second instruction is to eat matzah for seven days, to eat unleavened bread. We will have a matzah making webinar on Thursday to make our own matzah. So if you weren't able to get out to the store and get matzah, you can make your own. It's quite simple to make. It takes very few ingredients it takes flour, salt, and water. And optionally, you can add oil to it. But that is quite simple. It's a very simple and easy to make recipe. And you, don't even put salt in it. you will be able to learn on Thursday. Noga says we can even make it without salt. Mm -hmm. Usually, they did it without salt. Like all what they sell in Israel, mm -hmm. it's no salt. No salt. And no, and no oil either. I put oil just because the body of Yeshua is anointed. Yes. So I put olive oil, but other than that, nothing. Yes. Flour, water, and oil. So the instruction to eat matzah for seven days, it says in the Torah that if anyone violates this mitzvah, they will be cut off from Israel. And so it's, it's, a, it's an instruction that we are to heed carefully, lest we be cut off from Israel. Again, these are his instructions, not mine. It is written, for seven days you are to eat matzah. On the first day, remove the leaven from your houses. For whoever eats from the first to the seventh day is to be cut off from Israel. Exodus 12, 15. And the same instruction is also repeated in chapter 12, verse 19. So first instruction is to remove chametz, to remove leaven. The second instruction is to eat matzah for seven days. The third instruction is that the first and the seventh day of the, fe are of the week of unleavened bread are to be set apart as special days, as days of rest. It is to be a special Shabbat of rest on the first and the seventh day. And these days are days of complete rest with a holy convocation. The first day of unleavened bread will be on Monday, March 29th of this year. Starting on Saturday. Starting Saturday night, extending to Sunday night. 
on March 29th. And the seventh day will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On Sunday, April the 4th. The 4th, right. Sunday, April the 4th will be the seventh day of unleavened bread. It'll be the last day of Passover, if you like. So the first day and the seventh day are to be days of complete rest. If you are able to book those days off of work, they are Monday, March the 29th, and Sunday, April the 4th. The fourth instruction in the Torah is that no uncircumcised male is over. It is written, if a foreigner staying with you wants to observe Yehovah's Pesach, all his males must be circumcised. Then he may take part and observe it. He will be like a citizen of the land. But no uncircumcised person is to eat it. The same teaching or the same Torah is to apply equally to the citizen and to the foreigner living among you. Exodus 12, verses 48 and 49. I was not <laughs> circumcised when I was born. So as, a, as, an, as an, a newborn of eight days old, I was not circumcised. And when I accepted the truth of this instruction here in the Torah regarding Passover, I voluntarily chose to be circumcised as an adult in 2013 on the first day of the first month, on the first day of Aviv, two weeks before Passover. So this year marks my eighth anniversary. I have, this was eight years ago. Um, on the first day of the first month of Aviv. And no one forced me or talked me into circumcision. This was a personal decision between me and my father in heaven. My Messianic rabbi did not tell me, Michael, you should be circumcised. You're not circumcised. You cannot participate in Passover. No, never said that. And in our community at OMF, we uh, do not force circumcision on anyone. Uh, so please don't misconstrue what I'm saying. In Acts chapter 15, we are instructed that circumcision is not to be forced on a new convert from among the Gentiles. So a new Gentile believer in Yeshua the Messiah is not to be forced to be circumcised as an act of conversion to be saved. Acts makes that very clear in chapter 15. Salvation is a gift from Adonai that is by faith alone and by grace alone. So it was in the time of the Exodus, the Israelites were delivered from Egypt by the grace of God and by his grace alone and not in anything that they did. In fact, the Torah teaches us that the reason why Adonai brought Israel out of Egypt had nothing to do with the Israelites themselves. It had everything to do with the covenant promises that the Most High made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as he made those promises, he fulfilled them exactly to the day, as read in, Act, in Exodus chapter 12. Having said that, if we go to the next chapter in Acts, in Acts chapter 16, we see that circumcision was practiced in the Messianic community of the first century as part of their obedience to the Torah. <coughs> the example of Timothy is given, the example of Timothy is given to us in Acts chapter 16. If you read chapter 16, verses one through three, we see that Timothy was circumcised because he was a committed disciple of Yeshua the Messiah. It says that he had a good reputation and he was ready for this step in his life. So when Shaul took him and he took him on his travels. Now let's um, 
focus our attention on the Passover that Yeshua observed with his disciples. We talked about the first Passover when God brought Israel out of Egypt. Now let's turn our attention to the Passover that Yeshua the Messiah observed with his disciples. While they were eating, it says in Matthew, Yeshua took a piece of matzah, made the bracha, broke it, and gave it to the Talmudim and said, take, eat, this is my body. Also, he took a cup of wine, made the bracha, and gave it to them saying, all of you drink from it. Is the new covenant. My blood shed on behalf of many so that they may have their sins forgiven. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine again until the day I drink new wine with you in my father's kingdom. Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. As followers of Yeshua the Messiah, we follow the instructions that he gave us because he observed the Passover according to the instructions given in the Torah. And so we likewise follow Yeshua's example in our observance of Pesach. We do not follow Easter tradition as it is observed in the Christian realm because the Easter tradition follows a church calendar that is divorced biblical one. And so as believers in the Messiah, we return to our Jewish roots, to our biblical roots, to celebrate the Passover meal as Yeshua the Messiah celebrated it with his disciples in the first century. We continue to, pass, to observe the Passover as he instructed in remembrance of him. Yeshua said, do it in remembrance of me in Luke 22, 19. And Shaul reminded the Messianic community in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 24 and 25, that we are to observe the Passover in remembrance of Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua is at the center of our Passover observance. I, I can't stress this enough. Our Passover is all about Yeshua HaMashiach. He is at the focus. He is the Lamb of God who was slain for our sins. We have redemption through his blood thanks to his sacrifice for us. Our atonement is in his precious blood shed for us. Amen. Amen. So as a recap, the month of Aviv began on March the, the 15th. The 14th day of Aviv is on the 28th of March. And the first and seventh days of Unleavened Bread are March 29th and April the 4th of 2021. The month of Aviv, it is given in the scriptures. If you have a modern Hebrew calendar, the month is referred to as Nisan. The word Nisan is in the scriptures. You will find it in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1, and in the book of Esther, chapter 3, and verse 7. The word Nisan, the, the, the word is not Hebrew. It is Assyrian Babylonian in origin, and so it has... Uh, become one, the name of the month after the Babylonian captivity. The name Aviv, as we saw in chapter 13 of Exodus in the opening verses, the name Aviv actually means spring in the Hebrew. And it refers to barley that is Aviv. When barley is Aviv, its seeds have reached full size and maturity, and they are filling with starch, but they have not dried out on the stalk yet. So if you can imagine the barley plant, the stalk is full, 
the grain is, is big, but it is still green, it's still wet. It hasn't dried out yet, so it's not ready to be harvested just yet. So when the barley reaches this stage, it's called aviv, or simply put, ripe. When the barley is aviv, or fully formed, on a young ear of grain. Aviv in the Hebrew means spring. And we have in Israel, the city of Tel Aviv, meaning a hill, a spring hill, or um, Tel meaning a hill, and Aviv meaning spring. As believers in the Messiah, we follow a Messianic Passover Haggadah. The word Haggadah in Hebrew simply means uh, to tell from the verb lehagid. It means to tell or to recount a story. So simply put, the Haggadah is the telling of the Passover story of our deliverance from Egypt. And as believers in the Messiah, in our Passover Haggadah, we focus on our salvation in the blood of Yeshua, the Messiah. The Passover Haggadah gives step-by-step -step instructions on what to do in the Passover Seder. And the word Seder simply means the order in which the Passover Haggadah is observed. The order from the word Seder. So a Passover Haggadah makes it simple for any family to observe a Passover meal. And if you do a, an online search for a Messianic Passover Haggadah, you will find uh, quite a few of them available. You can find one at uh, TorahResource.com uh, with Tim Haig and the ministry there. You can also find a Messianic Haggadah that you can download from Shalom, Maine and the Messianic community there. And with this, I conclude my teaching on Passover and how we are to prepare. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha V'chavrim. May you be blessed as you prepare for Passover. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen.